Hi, my name is Matthew Baldwin, and thanks for joining this discussion today on innovation within the healthcare industry. We've assembled a panel of industry experts who will share innovation trends and current use of emerging technologies. There's a lot to discuss, so let's get right into it by introducing our panelists. First, we have Jagdeep Singh. He's a Vice President of Integration for Oracle. Greg Pavlik, who's a Senior Vice President for uh, Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence. And Mark Rekmilovich, who is uh, a Senior Director for Blockchain Technologies. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. The first question goes to you, Jack Deep. And can you just kind of s lay the foundation of the um, healthcare industry today and how, how, you're, how you're seeing it? Yeah, sure. So healthcare is a very important sector of our economy. It's uh, important to us as people also, but from an economy perspective, out of the $20 trillion economy that we have, 17, 18% of the economy is healthcare, right? There's a lot of spend and it's growing rapidly. Our population is aging. So it's really, really important that we come to grips with it. Right? And that's how we look at things from a healthcare perspective. There's a lot of spend, a lot of personalization that's required, a lot of connections that are required. And the, the, those are the key things that we grapple with as we talk to the healthcare practitioners and the normal population. A uh, lot of focus from our side when we look at healthcare is connected care, personalized care, precision medicine, things like cost effective healthcare. So th those are the key areas that we grapple with. From a connected care perspective, not only are we talking about connected care with patients who are spread out, but also systems that are all disparate, right? From, um, from a healthcare records perspective, they need to be shared across different organizations. Blockchain, for example, Mark, you'll attest to it. It plays a big role in how this thing uh, comes together. No, you absolutely, talk? if you have different organizations that need to share data, increasingly so, right? Uh, you often hear of a phenomenon today called team care, where somebody, particularly in serious cases, right, let's say congestive heart failure, somebody who's got a heart attack kind of conditions, when they're discharged from the hospital, they actually have a number of specialists that have to take care of them, and often there is a very high admittance rate. Uh, we have recently worked with a partner of ours who developed a solution for remote patient monitoring where folks who are discharged after a heart attack, after they've been treated by the hospital, go back home with some devices that allow them to uh, be monitored in, on real-time basis. And using Oracle IoT Cloud and Oracle Blockchain Platform, those exceptions, those warnings from you know, blood pressure readings every 30 minutes, uh, heart rate readings, weight gain you know, from a weight scale, et cetera, all can get reported to the distributed team across multiple organizations, maybe different physicians, specialists, uh, attending nurse, et cetera, all need to be made aware of some important data in real time. And in fact, they've recently run a pilot in uh, Austin, Texas with about 130 patients for three months who have been reporting the data from those devices through the Oracle IoT Cloud and Blockchain Platform. And uh, they reported a number of those warning situations. In 12 cases in particular, they actually had some life-saving events where if it wasn't for the fact that people were able to get that data in real time to multiple practitioners, their lives were saved, right. basically, as a result. So this is a very encouraging example of actually seeing a clinical trial coming together using multiple technologies that is saving people's lives. No, no, I totally agree with that. Right? There, at least one third to one fourth of the reported uh, uh, dis disasters in healthcare are because of medical mistakes and not being able to share data. So that's, that's critical. The other critical thing that we see is how does precision medicine or personalized medicine come into play? Greg, you talk about how data gets shared and how uh, patient data with genetic data to coming together plays a role in this. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there are two fundamental important uh, dynamics in terms of healthcare data management. One is uh, privacy, right? There's a lot of governance and control that needs to be put in place to ensure that patient privacy is respected. Second is, um, and sometimes it's intention, you need to bring data sets together so, because the more we can combine these data sets and look across different facets of the data, the more insights we get, where we can personalize healthcare, but we can also see things that may not be obvious within a single silo, right? We do a better job of personalization, but we can get new insights. So when we talk about personalized medicine, part of it is uh, the ability to frankly work with multiple sets of data together 
and to get insights out of them that may not be obvious even to an attending physician, right? A physician can only retain so much information in their head. We start to bring these data sets together, we can build machine learning models, we can use artificial intelligence, and we can see patterns that humans can't. And that can give insights into patient care that can avoid, for example, uh, prescribing the wrong kind of drugs, right. right? Or gets us into preventative medicine, right. and that's the best kind of medicine of all. Right, when we can start to see that, hey, there may be risk factors here, there may be things that we can do now that will prevent catastrophic developments downstream. And that the more we apply these models, the more we learn from the data, the more we can get ahead of the curve. And of course, that's great from a patient perspective, it's great from a healthcare provider perspective, and it's also phenomenal from a cost-saving perspective. Because uh, addressing a disease or preventing a disease preemptively means that you don't have to treat it, you don't have to deal with hospitalizations and all the costs that come downstream. Right, from the cost perspective, about a recent data set that I was reading, 5% of the patient population, 5% accounts for 50% of the spend. 50% of the spend, that's, mm -hmm. that's how. So another example that comes to mind about bringing the data together is, you look at the radiology things, you see something in radiology, yep. and how do you tie it to the EHR yes. or the records in there? You see this lung nodule, whether the radiologist needs to pay more attention or not, how do you mm -hmm. tie it to EHR, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that, from a data perspective, yep. and that's bringing those the importance of bringing the data together into a healthcare data lake, yeah. respecting right. privacy, having the right governance yeah. controls over it. The, the example you gave is really interesting from a radiology perspective, uh, because there is, yes, the case of correlation and getting new insights if somebody recognizes it, but one of the other exciting things we're working with is healthcare providers using deep learning algorithms to actually do image recognition and see things that radiologists are missing. So early stages of cancer, for example, that uh, may, for whatever reason, because of the angle of an x-ray, uh, not be visible or, or easily noticeable by a radiologist. We're finding that these machine learning driven algorithms are starting to get deeper and actually do a better job at detection. So and then, of course, once you're detected, you can start to look at the correlations. Yeah, and, you know, the privacy, of course, is always a big factor in uh, any time you, you're going to combine data, particularly in a, if you're going to search with a particular patient. If it's not research where you can anonymize the data and all that, but you're actually treating an individual human being. Uh, the privacy considerations and who is allowed to see what data becomes important and we're seeing, beginning to see a number of situations where people are saying, you know, I want as a patient to have control, data sovereignty basically, over who's going to see what parts of my data. So when you're sharing the records, typically what people do is they use blockchain to share the milestones of the events. I mean, if you had a particular appointment and, you know, there was some metadata associated with it, but the deep data all of the results from that appointment are usually stored in individual systems, different hospitals. Nobody is really going to try to bring all of that together into one location if it's separate companies, separate physicians, etc. But what they're going to try to do is link the fact that they exist and then link the user's permissions, the patient's permissions of who is going to be allowed mm -hmm. to see the data. Using those permissions, essentially getting a permission token then allows uh, particular providers maybe to go back in and request access to the data from another organization that they could not before. Right. The, another thing that we see a lot in healthcare is about processes, right? There are clinical processes, mm -hmm. which, and then there are back office processes. Both those processes need to be automated, if you will, right? And there's a lot of opportunity that we see from an automation perspective. Mm -hmm. the, data plays a big role in all that, right? So how do you, these process, like who do I refer this patient to? Mm -hmm. And in the back end, okay, this patient is six month due, seven month due for an appointment, all those things, the processes play a big role into all this. That's what we are seeing from a, uh, from a, just an industry watching perspective. I think that's correct. A lot of the process automation, uh, you know, it fundamentally relies on workflow technologies, right. right? And you want to be able to connect systems together and drive a workflow end to end. What's been interesting over the last few years is that those workflows themselves are now being optimized with artificial intelligence. Um, so you're starting to see robotic process optimization be applied in some use cases. You're starting to see more sophisticated um, process-based applications being developed which are using the insights from machine learning to drive the processes themselves and I think that trend's going to continue. Mm -hmm. so. A big process also thinks that's actually 
is about data integration itself, you see in clinical trials where you have multiple levels of organizations, right, from, you know, the pharmaceutical company, clinical research organizations called CROs, and multiple organizations down the chain, ultimately to some site that's running the trial, multiple sites usually, right? All of the data needs to be collected. There are, there are processes in place, but those processes are not very effective because the way they collect the data and correlate the data is, you know, using uh, maybe data transfer, file transfer mechanisms if you're lucky, you know, if it's not fax machines. And <laughs> so we're beginning to see actually some improvements in that area where uh, companies are putting together, if you will, as a consortium and network based on a blockchain technology to be able to co uh, collect the data easily, ensure that it's trusted, that it's verified, you know, all of the patient privacy information is collected as well. So all of the permissions to participate in different stages of the trials. And all of the data flow now is much more real time. So you can, simplify, you can simplify and you can in fact eliminate some of the processes that traditionally had to be there because of the batch nature of data collection and integration. You just do away with that by using a more real-time method of collecting the data. Right, no, no, connected systems, right? All these disparate systems, they all need to get connected somehow, right? It's a single source of truth and real-time, right? I should know what my information is and how does it correlate to other, what other people are seeing about me. Right. The other aspect that I see is there's a lot of waste in healthcare. There's a lot of, like there are about $750 billion worth of waste in the total healthcare spent. Right? There's a lot of fraud in healthcare. There's a lot of uh, trials or things, useless tasks. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure data plays a lot of role in it, and how do you? Uh, absolutely, so one of the things uh, that Oracle was involved with recently was a, a data consolidation project for one of the major European national healthcare providers. Nice. Um, they brought all the data together into the databases within the Oracle Cloud, um, and then they provided a machine learning layer over top to start to look at uh, managing this consolidation effectively. Um, they scanned uh, you know, billions and billions of healthcare records to, to drive the consolidation. Total savings year over year, about 700 million US dollars. Wow. So it can be very, very high impact. Then you mentioned fraud, another great application for artificial intelligence, right? Fraud detection, state-of-the-art fraud detection approaches are typically now using machine learning algorithms. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it over very, very increasingly large data sets, uh, increasingly effectively. Right. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. One of the big areas that we've seen uh, where fraud plays a significant detrimental role is in uh, counterfeit drugs. Uh, particularly in uh, many of the developing countries. Uh, there is uh, some estimates of 25-30% uh, of the drugs in the supply chain, in the distribution chain, are counterfeit, or they're not effective, maybe vaccines that are past their due dates and so on. Oracle was recently involved actually in a large project uh, in India uh, with uh, a pharmaceutical company called Strides Pharmaceutical, Apollo Pharmacies Chain, and ETI Org, which is a government-driven sort of innovation organization and regulator to create a blockchain-based uh, IoT and blockchain-based system for tracking the distribution chain from the pharmaceutical manufacturer company all the way through multiple companies involved to the final uh, pharmacy, Apollo Pharmacy, and all of the intermediaries, including data coming from the delivery vehicles, the trucks actually, uh, from IoT sensors, right? Ensuring that you know nobody stops the truck in the middle of the road, opens the door, unloads, you know, put some you know, counterfeit boxes in and so on as well as uh, temperature tracking. Vaccines are very temperature sensitive, right? So you need to make sure you don't exceed it in temperature ranges. Uh, so there was a pilot that was put together. It was interesting because only a few companies started by participating in the threats from pharmaceutical Apollo. And now they're actually writing a big report, uh, but they're trying to get the rest of the industry to jump on board. What we're beginning to see is more and more incentives for people to collaborate, to come and join this kind of systems where they can use a way of tracking the data, sharing the data across these multiple organizations, enabled through the blockchain technologies, uh, AI technologies, and so on, to reduce the percentage of counterfeit drugs in this case, which is a huge problem in the developing world. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, um, thank you so much for your insights. I, I think the combination of IoT, blockchain, artificial intelligence and machine learning associated to providing better outcomes for the healthcare industry is truly, um, it, it, it's revolutionary really when you think about where the opportunity is going to be going. I want to thank you very much for being in this panel 
and um, look forward to working with you in the future. And I'd like to thank our audience for, uh, for attending uh, this, this meeting and look forward to seeing you again. Have a good day.